We've spent the last couple lectures talking about bonds, right? We talked about the fact that elements combine together so they can become stable and they form these things called bonds. That could be covalent, ionic, and we also talked about hydrogen bonds. Today we're going to talk about a very special molecule called water. And water is really one of the things that we look for when we look for life in other planets, right? And that's because water is so important to life. You can't have life without water. So why is it important? Well, for one thing, it provides a place for chemical reactions to occur. Any reaction in your body, digestion, breathing, um, making new uh, molecules in general, any, anything that involves a process in the body requires water. It has to happen in a water environment, aquatic environment. It's how we transport things through our body, right? So, for example, let's say you ate your lunch just now, right? And you digested it, and all that food got broken down, <clears throat> excuse me, in your digestive tract. Now we got to somehow get those nutrients to all your cells, right? Because you have cells in the tips of your fingers, your brain's all the way up here, your toes of your feet. Somehow we have to get those nutrients to all those cells, and the way that happens is by your blood. So your blood carries oxygen, you know that. But it also carries things like sugar and nutrients from your food. So we need water in the blood to carry things around. So just think of it as the subway system of your body. And it makes up most of what you are. We're 75 to 90% water. So almost <clears throat> everything alive is almost all water. And um, some organisms are even more than that, like a worm, for example. Um, that is mostly water. So what makes water so special? Well, one thing that makes it so special is that it's held together by these things called hydrogen bonds, right? So hydrogen bonds form when you have the hydrogen of one element, one molecule, attracting to the oxygen of another. And that's how water molecules attract to each other. So the positively charged hydrogen atoms of one molecule attract the negatively charged portion of another water molecule. Now, the one thing you have to remember, this is a very weak bond. It's not a strong bond. So, for example, if you heat water up enough, it's going to start to disassociate. It's going to come separate from each other, and then they're going to evaporate. So, for example, if I put water on a stove and put some heat under it, that water is going to evaporate. <clears throat> so basically those hydrogen bonds are important because they hold these molecules together and we'll talk more about that later. What's the most important characteristic of water? Well, I'm going to say the most important characteristic of water is how polar it is. It has a high polarity and we talked about that in the last lecture, right? We talked about the fact that there's a slightly positive charge on the hydrogen side of the atom and there's a slightly negative charge on the oxygen side of the molecule. So what ends up happening is the oxygen has a stronger pull on those electrons and what that does is it makes it so water is like a little tiny magnet. So if you take a look here this would be a single water molecule but if I take the negative part of an oxygen and I get it near the positive part where the hydrogen is they're going to stick together and that's what causes water to be able to stick to itself and to other things and it's because of that high polarity. So let's talk a little bit about the properties of water, because this is something you need to be familiar with. So water has several things about it that is really reliant on the way it forms its bonds. So the reason why water has all the properties that it has is because of the hydrogen bonds that hold them together, and also because of the fact that they're very polar. So let's get started. The first property of water that you need to know is called cohesion, okay? So co means together or with, and that is very simply when water attracts to itself. So when water, water molecule attracts to another water molecule, that would be cohesion. So perfect example, you're driving in the car, it's a rainy day, your parents are driving, you're going nuts, you wanna jump out the window, you're so bored, and then you start to watch the water droplets go down, like you've all done this before, right? You watch the water droplets go down the, the window and you're watching them race each other, but when they get close to each other, something happens, they stick together and they form one big droplet. That's cohesion. It's when water attracts to itself. And it's because of the fact that water is so polar. So it can attract up to four other water molecules and they form those hydrogen bonds. <clears throat> this causes something called water beating when water attracts to other water molecules. So for example, if you drop water on your counter right now, it doesn't just splash all over the place. It starts to attract to itself, right? It forms these little water beads and that is cohesion. 
Also, it causes something called surface tension. And surface tension is because at this, like you can see this is called a water boatman. It's a kind of insect. Some organisms can walk on water. We can't because our surface area is too small for how much we weigh. But if you take a look at this insect here, it's able to spread its legs far enough apart that it's able to spread out its surface area. And because of that surface tension at the water, because that water is attracted to itself so strongly and there's no water above it, what you end up with is a scenario called surface tension. So water at the surface, if you touch water, it, it will actually have a little resistance to it. That's because of that strong connection of those water molecules at the surface of the water. <clears throat> Adhesion is a lot like cohesion, but the difference is adhesion is when water attracts to other surfaces or other substances. For example, the meniscus in a graduated cylinder, right? So if you take a look at this graduated cylinder here, you can see that you've all done this before. The water is actually dipping down in the middle. And why does that happen? Well, the reason why, it would be like if I was holding a string right now and I gave you the other end of the string and we're holding it far apart from each other. That string's gonna dip in the middle. It's gonna have a little dip to it because gravity's pulling downwards, right? So where we're holding it, it's holding on, but where it gets to the middle, it's gonna dip down. So if you take a look here, you can see the water is attracted to the glass of the graduated cylinder, but in the middle of the graduated cylinder, there's no glass, so that water dips down. So that's a great example of adhesion. So adhesion is going to be when water um, attracts to another substance like graduated cylinder another example is something called capillary action which um i think that this is being covered up there you go so capillary action what's capillary action well i'm going to draw something here you've probably gone to the doctor before right and if you go to the doctor sometimes they have to take a little bit of blood so let's say this is your finger <clears throat> and sometimes what they'll do is they'll take a needle and they'll poke a little dot of blood there and you'll get a little dot of blood and what they'll then do is they'll take a very thin tube called a capillary tube and this very thin tube it's like a long thin glass straw they're going to put that up to that blood and what's going to happen is that blood is going to go up the tube right it's going to shoot up the tube now why does it do that well the reason why is because that blood is made up of mostly water so i'm going to enlarge the size of the tube so let's say this is the tube here right it's a long glass tube. What's going to happen is that blood, which is here, right? so this is the blood, the water in that blood is going to attract the glass. And because it's so thin, it actually pulls it up the tube. So that glass is going to attract the blood because the blood is mostly water. And that's called capillary action. So capillary action is caused by adhesion. Okay, let's keep going here. What else do we need to know? Water has a very high specific heat capacity. What? High specific, what does that mean? Well, specific heat is very simply how much energy something can absorb. So water can absorb a lot of energy before it goes up in temperature. The earth is, the reason why the earth is able to keep the temperature that it has is because it's covered with mostly water, right? The earth is like 70% water. So that water absorbs all that heat. It's why in the summertime, if you go down by the water, it's a little warmer there in the winter too, right? If you go to the winter time, the water's a little warmer than the air because the water holds on to that heat. It's also why our bodies will hold on to heat. So it's called high specific heat capacity. And it's because those hydrogen bonds can hold a lot of energy. Energy is absorbed in bonds and held in bonds. So water has a lot of bonds in there, those hydrogen bonds, and that allows them to hold on to a lot of excess heat. So water's really good at absorbing heat and holding on to it. That's called high specific heat capacity. Capacity just means how much something can hold. Like, so if I say, what's the capacity of the gymnasium? It might be 800 people, right? So capacity just means how much it can hold. And then heat capacity means how much heat it can hold. Evaporative cooling. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. We've all sweat before, right? Sweat work. Um, well, let me give you an example. Let me go back to my diagram here. So let's say I'm gonna erase this diagram and we'll draw another diagram. So let's say this is my arm. We'll go with, so let's say this is my arm here, right? And it's hot outside, so I sweat. 
Now, why does sweat cool you down? Well, sweat is hot, right? We're 98.6 degrees, so your sweat is going to be warm. So what happens is the water is going to pool up on your skin. So pretend that's a really big sweat droplet. So what ends up happening actually is in order to cool down, that water evaporates. If I want, imagine it's a stove, right? So if I take a pot of water and I put it on a stove, all right, so let's say this is a pot of water and I put it on a stove and I put a flame under that water. That's going to heat the water up and that water is going to evaporate, right? So the flame is going to be causing that heat. So the same thing is here, but what happens is the heat from your body heats up the water and then the water evaporates. So by having your sweat cool you down, it's actually just causing the water to evaporate off and it cools down your skin and your whole body temperature drops down. That is called evaporative cooling. And that's what allows your body to cool down because as that water evaporates, it pulls the heat away from its environment. And that's called sweating. So we're gonna finish up there for today um, in terms of a lecture. That, just the main points that I want to go over is that water is so special because it's very polar and it has hydrogen bonds. And that allows it to have cohesion, which means it attracts to itself. It has adhesion, which means it attracts to other things. It has a high specific heat capacity, which means that it's able to hold on to a lot of heat and store it, and it also is able to cool down through evaporation, which is like sweating.